Hello, today we're going to talk about the best way to catch a fish in a river. Stay tuned. So the best reason or way to catch a fish in a river is to really focus on what's going on. I just accidentally clicked on a different type of view here, so don't be dismayed. There are different things going on in each river that you're looking at, particularly mine here in Boston. And you have to remember that the fish act a certain way in rivers instead of in a lake or a pond or something where the water is stagnant. The water is always flowing at different rates of speed depending on if the, weather, the, the river is skinny or if it's wide. And also each river has its own speed and water clarity as well and what's in the water and, and how much structure it has on it. But the most important thing to think about is how are fish going to get out of the current. There is almost no fish that likes to sit in the current and work its butt off just to stay where it is. It's a fruitless activity. Would you stand in front of a a wind machine that's blowing at you and try to fight it like this forever? No, that doesn't make any sense. Obviously you would go to the side of a building where the wind isn't blowing so you can get out. Kind of like when you're in a, a blizzard. So the fish are doing the same thing in the river. So you have to think about this when you're looking for places to fish. So in the Charles River here, there are several places where that happens. The river is slower at certain points because there's, I believe, 10 plus dams, which slow the water down and then speed it up. And the last one is right here in Watertown. And from there, it actually picks up speed as it goes down and slows down around curves. And in the curves, there's structure as well, where it slows down. This is because of the cut that the actual speed and um, direction of the river is going. So you'll have deep cuts kind of dug into the river and these are places where fish will congregate, where they can take a rest, they can find a spot to ambush bait, or they can go up to their spawning grounds like a herring do every year. So let's look a little closer at these locations because a lot of people want to hear, you know, things about, oh, what's the best lure? What's the best technique? What's the best rig, but sometimes it's as simple as knowing where the fish will be most of the time. And for the majority of fish on river, if you want to find the, the best way to catch fish on the river, you have to know where the fish are first. Then you can make your presentation. Your presentation with your rig, your, your live bait, your, the way you position your boat, how quiet you are, you worry about things about water clarity, and how much sun is hitting it, or what kind of bait fish are around the area, what's the local forage, et cetera, et cetera. But if you don't know where the fish are, all that doesn't matter. Because if you can't find the fish, you can't do anything to make them bite, to make them take action. So first, find the fish. That's what we're going to do here. So... I'll keep it at this view for a little bit. So, right here, my mind here. Uh, right about here is a dam, and it picks up speed rapidly because it's skinny here. And as soon as it opens up, it picks up, it slows down speed. So there's a lot of fish that do not like to hang around here, and if they do, they hang on structure, um, overhanging trees, logs, rocks around the corner, and any of the bends. This is one of the first major bends. It doesn't look like much of a bend, but it's enough to actually slow the water down here. And you'll find plenty of fish sitting here. Why? Well, there's something you can't see. And guess what it is? It's lots and lots of lily pads 
And lily pads don't like being in a heavy current. So you know if there's a mass of lily pads or overhanging trees that haven't been blown away from the current, that's where fish are. There are tons of bass, bluegill, perch that's lined up along these weed beds. They hide in here, they spawn in here, and the other fish are just roaming, roaming the shoreline here right on the edge, waiting for one foolish fish to pop out, and they snatch it up. And if you're on a boat, that's exactly where you want to make your presentation with your lure. And if you're even if you have some top water lures, those could work well if they're more or less weedless, like a frog. You can work it right along this last inner edge here. This hit. But a nice crankbait or a spinnerbait along this edge is fantastic. And if you just want to catch some smaller fish with your, your children, if you're fishing with them. Cool, get a little beetle spinner. You know what I'm talking about. It's like a about two inches long, has a little spinner on top. You can even use it without the spinner or, or like a crappy jig or just a white curly tail grub. And it's worked out along the shoreline. And in most places that have features like this, you're going to be catching some fish real quick. But you can work it from the shoreline as well. There are places usually where you can get access to the water, like right here. And there's probably holes in here somewhere you can actually hit the inside and but not so much the outside which isn't very cool but further down you can get to those areas but you see here the the um the lily pad stop and why is that because the curve is over this is uh in the current again not cool for fish fish don't want to be there so the next place you hit where fish will, will hang around is right here and guess what the yacht club slows it down and the next thing you know, you see lily pads again. So here's a key indicator. This is obviously something to think about. Where the water slows down, there's um, growth, there's plant growth, either algae or lily pads, or you'll see that there's trees that have fallen in the water and they haven't blown away. The current hasn't taken them. And that means the water is slower there. And where the water is slower, there are fish there. Because fish don't like to work against the current. They like to relax and wait for the fish to come to them. That's a smart fish. <laughs> Save energy and eat easy. You know, looks more fantastic. Look, next spot, we got a little curve here. Boom, huge mass of lily pads, all up in the, the boat ramps too. They probably should clean this up, but you know, not for everybody. Notice over here, you would think, oh, this little hole here and stuff, it's probably, uh, be some movement here but there should be some fish here as well you know why isn't there lily pads there that's because water is moving right through here it's it's found an exit path but it gets constricted which actually speeds up the water here and pushes it through which doesn't allow much um of this kind of growth there are some overhanging trees you might find some fish there but hmm, not great so as you've seen here already the curves are where you will find slower water on the, um, you want to call this the back side of the curve, is where the water is going to slow down, right there. Because this, if it goes, if it goes this way, the, uh, it's like you're driving like a race car or something, like NASCAR, it's not able to uh, carry the curve, it has to make a, an A turn, I forgot what the next curve, it has to go around the curve smooth, it has to cut it off at the, at the edge. But it's not able to cut back in because it would lose control and spin out. So it goes to the outside. So the water, the water here is going around the corner and going to the outside, which means it's slower right here. Great place to try to look for fish. So you keep looking for places like that. Look at it. There's no growth here at all. It's going too fast. This corner, it's constricted at the bridge. Now I also know that there's a little bit of a, a hole here too because of the digging of the uh, the the, um, the bridge abutment but it's not curvy enough. So, so it's not much growth. This looks like growth, but I think it's actually land. Here's the next curve. Where is it gonna go? It's the opposite. Therefore, the slower area is gonna be right here. But the river is getting wider, which means there's more water movement and a little harder for the water to be stopped. But still, this is a good spot right here. Actually, I think. Northeast from Coast House. Um, yes, I, I've caught some fish over here. 
and a lot of people, I can't, why do I not see a fish right here? It's not a curve, but behind this is actually a little, it's not a pond, it's actually connected to the river. These little cutaways, and it goes back to right about here, and it's about five feet of water, and it's usually covered in lily pads because it's almost not moving at all. And it's a nice place to rest, and it's also definitely a spotting ground. You can see the little kettle uh, dents in it. And that's where your smaller fish that are being born and the one, the small fry from bass or catfish or anything else will hang out so you don't get eaten by some other fish or even your own family. <laughs> um, and I'll let you know, there's even people like Greg Miner from... Um, He's a local uh, fishing guide for the Charles River. He has it right on his videos, right on, his, on the TV show that he was uh, on for On the Water. And he's fishing right under this thing. And he catches like three bass right there, just sitting there. And they, these are like, you know, two pounders. They're obviously sitting under the bridge, waiting for an easy meal, and hanging out in a slow area of the river. Taking a break. I see lots of people sit here, and they'll cast out over here, they'll cast over there, they'll cast right there, and they'll catch jack. Because it's in the middle of the river. It's moving way too fast. And you can see your, your bait that's going do 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 getting taken down the river. And, you know, maybe you'll get a passerby or maybe a striped bass or chasing out the herring and it's going crazy. Or maybe you'll get a, like a lone catfish just hanging out, looking, sniffing around for something smelly. But other than that, it's, it's going to be hard hard to catch anything. And a lot of people just think there's no fishing here, or the fishing's not good, or the fishing's bad. But it's more or less, they don't know exactly the best way to catch a fish on a river, which is what we're talking about now. So I don't want to spend too much time, you know, here. There are some cool things like this. Is, uh, <laughs> it's like a U-turn right here. This whole area is pretty awesome. And the closer you get to the ocean, less it's going to be. But there's some cool things, like the Storo Lagoon. It's a little pathway here, and this is actually a park that's run by Boston. And that little um, community rowing place where you can get a boat or you can learn how to sail. And this is all protected from the river. It's flow. It slows down to a halt. It kind of tries to blow in here, and right to the edge there's some nice lily pads here, and there's some really good fishing right here on these edges. And over here, you'll see me in my previous videos spending a lot of time in this corner and in this corner. There's lots of uh, rocks, there's lots of overhanging trees. There's logs in the water, there's lily pads, there's places to hide for the small fish, there's places to ambush for the big fish. There's a blowhole here to the main river where the fish will come in and out as they please to go to deeper water if it gets too hot during the summer. There's just lots of movement of fish and bait fish, and it's fantastic. It's a great place to be. And as you can see, there's growth. And there's stuff, I've got stuff all the way through here, but those pots back there are better than around here. Another good spot is right here. There's lots of, um, let's just call these docks. And around and under these is great. It's kind of shallow. I'm talking like four feet or less. But there's this fish just hanging out here, taking a break. And, you know, the other side of the river has other things too. There's lots of bridges going over the water. There's lots of pilings, lots of places to hide, lots of places to tuck away, and lots of places to ambush fish that are going around. Here's the Coral Canal. It's really deep here for, I mean, it's like 15 feet, which is pretty ridiculous for this little alleyway right here. But uh, tomorrow or some other day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go here. It's iced over right now. Hopefully not so much. I'm going to get something a little sharp, a little pokey and pew, bang the ice and see if I can't make a hole right here or along this lower section where I can actually reach the water. Because the, the ramp actually goes up as you go out here. It's like pretty, you can see it's a little taller right there. It's it's like 10 feet down. But here it's like two or three. And right here it's like an inch. And I can get on the water and I can sit somewhere safe 
and do some ice fishing, which is the, I think it's the best way to go ice fishing if the if you know the fish are right below you. Because you don't have to worry about falling through the ice, you don't have to worry about how thick the ice is, you don't have to dig that much, and you have something strong supportive to do it on, and you can easily get out of the water, you don't have to be in the middle and say, oh man, I need the ice picks in case I need to drag myself out, I can bring my right got all the kind of gear, I have to get the tent, I have to get the, the super auger, I have to get the special flaggy things all over the place. No, you can just get a couple spots right around the safe area and get your ice fishing done. So let's get out of here. This is down where I used to live. I actually lived right around here somewhere when I grew up here as a kid. And I knew that the fishing was fantastic. This is the Rappahannock. It's a really muddy river. And there's lots of catfish there and some bass as well. And it goes right up to... Uh, like Fergusburg, you know, there's a place like Stafford, and there's Quantico uh, Marine Base, if you've heard of that, and there's DC right here, you know, boom, and this is the Potomac River coming out of there, and there's, this is the Chesapeake Bay, and you, we all know about the Chesapeake Bay, fantastic fishing, and there's tons and tons of, like, rivers, um, bays, sounds, like, working their way into the Chesapeake Bay, York River, James River, um, this is even like a little cutaway, the Rappahannock and, and the Potomac. And there's even cool things like uh, there's Fishing Bay and Fishing Creek. Now, obviously, you want to check those places out. If they are known enough to be called Fishing Bay and Fishing Creek, try them out. But as you can see here, let's go. Oh, I know over there too well. Um, to Rappahannock here. A little further up. Just tap the panic. You can even see from here that the water is muddy. But there's these little flats here where the fish can take a break. They can roll up in here for a while. And it's not safe to go in there like walking, but you can take a nice little flat bottom boat and get into that shallow water and get access to those fish. And there's a bridge here, it's really wide. But there's lots of cutaways that aren't really marked. If you look closer, you can see all the access to slower water. Right here at Cat Point Creek. Let me guess. Hmm. There's catfish in this section. <laughs> lots of catfish. And this muddy water that meanders back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All the way to a bay. Hmm. Now look at this one. There's a little corner right here where it swerves this way. Guess what? It cut out this section from the speed from the speed of the river. It got cut out and left this right here, which is Mulberry Island, which is all mud flats. And man, like what what could be up in here? I could only guess. You can get lost in this like labyrinth of rivers and streams. I don't know how you even call this like an island. And then you just roll out to the beach. You would get lost. Go west. Hit the beach right back at Tabahannock Hannock again. But as you can see, there's lots of places you can go on a river where the water slows down. Don't be tempted to go out in the middle and cast, you know, your line right down to this deep water to see if there's something like a, a Loch Ness monster down there ready to bite your, your giant hunk of your can of worms or your your, um, your chicken liver or whatever you're trying to use for catfish. You might catch a big blue down there. You, you might, but that's a lot of water to cover. Stick to the places where it's easier for the fish to save energy. Simple. That's all you need to think about. Once you get there, you can... Try all the cool stuff you have in your rod and all that, you know, all that stuff. Whatever you want to buy, whatever you want to use, whatever technique you have. But stick to places where the river slows down. Yeah, and that's pretty much all you need to know about the best way to catch a fish in the river. Um, if you want to learn more, please go down below to the bottom. You'll see some nice playlists about different things, beach fishing, Charles River fishing, um, uh, fishing techniques, how-tos, tips, etc., etc. And if you want to know when I 
make new content, like the ones I'll be making all this week, click that little button down at the bin at the just below here somewhere. You know, it says subscribe. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Like the page or write a comment and I'll respond. So thanks for watching. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.